I want you to meet Anna Morgan Lloyd. Admittedly, not the best photos of her big excursion to the big city. When after the New Year, she and a friend made the 10-hour drive from her home in Indiana to Washington, D.C. to hear President Trump speak at the Stop the Steal rally. Then, having been riled up, they were among the first 100 to 200 people to storm the Capitol. I'm picking glass out of my purse, her friend Donna wrote on Facebook after confirming they'd made it inside. It was a day I'll remember forever, Anna gushed on social media. I'm proud that I was part of it. A reminder that five people died because of that day. But sure, that was the most exciting day of my life, Morgan Lloyd said in another post. Anna Morgan Lloyd was tracked down by federal authorities when she tried to get a gun permit two weeks after the riot and was arrested. Great! Got her. Throw the book at her. Surely the judge would want to send a message in his sentencing of the first insurrectionist to plead guilty, right? Right? Hmm. Anna Morgan Lloyd was sentenced to probation, community service, and a whopping $500 fine. The sole misdemeanor she pleaded guilty to, parading, picketing, or demonstrating in Capitol buildings. Just for comparison, here are just a few of the other things worthy of a $500 fine in parts of the US. Trying to pass off margarine as real butter in Wisconsin. Grading or packing potatoes incorrectly in Idaho. You might also get jail time for that one. And sending pizza as a prank in Louisiana, a rite of childhood. So go ahead, kids. Try to overthrow the government. Apparently, and especially if you're white, it will only cost you 500 bucks. That the first defendant in the Capitol insurrection is getting off with no jail time is a reminder why we can't rely on a bunch of Republican-appointed judges and the FBI to sort out what was the biggest attack on the Capitol since 1815. Remember, these people managed to accomplish something even the 9-11 hijackers weren't able to do. They successfully breached the Capitol. In the wake of that attack, we had a 9-11 commission. But Republicans voted down a January 6th commission. Still, what we do have is what Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced today, a special select committee of House Democrats to investigate the January 6th attack. We yielded on every point. We yielded on the makeup of the committee. We yielded on the timing of the committee. We yielded on the process of the committee. I just would not yield on the scope. They wanted to make it about Black Lives Matter. That wasn't what happened on January 6th. So it's not going to yield on the scope. I'm sorry, all that yielding is supposed to be a good thing. But OK, better late than never. Don't get me wrong, it's great that this committee is finally happening. But we're approaching the six-month anniversary of the insurrection. Attorney General Merrick Garland just announced 500 people have been arrested with more to come. And as with impeachment, Speaker Pelosi had to be dragged into getting Democrats to investigate January 6th on their own. You think Republicans, really? Do you think Republicans would have waited this long to go it alone if Black Lives Matter had attacked the Capitol? Have we forgotten all the Benghazi investigations by the GOP? Get on with it. And as for the Republicans, how can anyone who professes to say that Blue Lives Matter be opposed to investigating what DC police officer Michael Fanon went through on January 6th? I ended up uh, going there with my partner. Um, I responded to the Lower West Terrace Tunnel, which I think was uh, what we've determined was where the apex of most of the violence was that day. And I was pulled away from other officers out into the crowd uh, where I was severely beaten and also uh, electrocuted numerous times with a taser at the base of my skull. Uh, the injuries I sustained were a traumatic brain injury uh, as well as suffering a heart attack. And um, I also, I do grapple with, uh, with PTSD as a result of, uh, of that day. Simply horrific. Officer Fanon wants an investigation, obviously. But GOP House leader Kevin McCarthy hasn't even met with him. Meanwhile, the Justice Department has released more new videos of that day from the officers' perspectives of police defending themselves from the pro-Trump mob. Republicans, though, are playing a shell game, deftly shuffling responsibility for the insurrection. For the insurrection. Is it here? Is it there? And so far, the Democratic leadership has been an all-too-easy mark. And the courts are a joke. Just look at Anna Morgan Lloyd of Bloomfield, Indiana. What's to stop this from happening again if everyone who participated only gets a proverbial slap on the wrist? Surely there have to be consequences. 
You know, I'm not afraid of Donald Trump running again in four years. I'm afraid he's going to run again and lose because he can do this again. Joining us now is Congressman Ted Liu, Democrat from California and the former House impeachment manager you just saw there speaking. Congressman, good to have you back again on the show. You know, we chose that soundbite of yours because we often say, I often speak to my team and we always talk about, never sure who to attribute it to, that line I'm sure you've heard about, a coup without consequences is merely a rehearsal, a practice run. As someone who worked so hard on that second impeachment trial of Donald Trump and who saw the vote fail in the Senate, what is your reaction when you see that the first defendant sentenced for their participation that day, the first person Trump incited, got off with a, what, a slap on the wrist, $500? Uh, thank you, Mehdi, for your question. Uh, I am a former prosecutor, and so I do know that when it comes to sentencing, they do look at a lot of individualized facts. I just don't know enough about the person's background and what kind of testimony uh, may have been provided to the judge. Uh, so it's hard for me to sort of opine uh, on how appropriate that sentence is. But I do know there are different levels of culpability. There are clearly people that did far worse things. Uh, I think it just happened that this case was probably not the person that did the worst thing. I mean, you, you clearly had people that assaulted police officers uh, that did significant damage uh, to the Capitol. So I think this but wasn't one of their defendants that did the worst things. But, I mean, this is a problem with the worst things. It's all very subjective. I mean, you have uh, cases, as we've covered on this show, of a black woman in Texas who goes to prison for voting with the wrong ballot paper. And you have this white mob at the Capitol, many of whom have been processed quickly because the courts are crowded, many of whom are just not seen as extremists in the same way that black and brown people are. I do not disagree with you on that point at all. Uh, my solution to that is we shouldn't be putting black and brown people with long, you know, into long jail sentences or long prison terms. Um, so that is my solution. Uh, not that we should give long prison terms to yes. everybody to make up for that. I think it, we need to go the other way. And we have too many people uh, I, stuck in our prisons. I 100% I, I, I agree with you on that. But again, it's just simply pointing out the double standard. Right now, unfortunately, black and brown people are getting prison sentences for all sorts of minor offenses in a way that white domestic extremists are not. The House Select Committee that will be investigating the insurrection, good to hear that it's happening, but it's six months after the insurrection. Why has it taken so long? Uh, so the U.S. Senate moves in mysterious and strange ways, and they're slow, and we were trying to have them be able to pass the bipartisan commission, and we finally just decided it wasn't going to happen. So I'm very pleased that Speaker Pelosi announced this week that she's forming a select committee to investigate January 6th. The reason that's important is because the select committee will have subpoena power. And in the House, unlike the Senate, Republicans cannot block the issuance of subpoenas uh, from our committees. So we will get this information and the truth is going to come out. But <laughs> Congressman, though, look, you've had subpoena powers on other committees and you haven't used them in previous impeachment trials and in previous inquiries into Trump's tax returns. I mean, sh can we really have faith that this time, this time, the House Demo Democrats are going to do what needs to be done? Uh, I don't disagree with you. It's one reason I've authored legislation to allow the House to execute what's known as inherent contempt power, which would give us the power to fine individuals up to $100,000 for ignoring congressional subpoenas. I think we need that kind of mechanism to get quick compliance with subpoenas. There is also another difference. In the Biden administration, we don't have the view of the Trump administration where they just oppose all congressional subpoenas. So we could have the Department of Justice uh, with the U.S. attorney from D.C. enforce these subpoenas through criminal means. Let's hope so. We opened with video we hadn't seen before this week, police body camera footage from January the 6th. A chunk of the nation has already moved on. Uh, from January 6th. This is not 9-11. The images of that day are not burned into every American's mind. So how do you as a lawmaker, as a former prosecutor, keep Republicans from rewriting history when I feel like we as a country, and not just Republicans, many Americans across the board are just moving on, have moved on? That's a great point. And I'm so disturbed that so many Republicans are trying to whitewash what happened on January 6th. They're literally telling people that it was a normal tourist visit. They want people to reject the evidence of their eyes and ears. 
I think what you're doing is great, what the media is doing and showing these images, both how horrific it was, as well as some of the Republicans who are just making insane statements. One reason we did the second impeachment trial was not only to hold the former president accountable, but also to put forth a record for the American people of what actually happened on that day. But we do have to keep reminding people. And unfortunately, if we don't do that, people's memories uh, are, are short. And so we do have to keep uh, reminding people about what happened. So let's uh, talk about voting rights, which is, of course, linked to all of this. The big lie about the election, Republican voter suppression bills and the failed attempt by Democrats to get the For the People Act through the Senate. Your House Democratic colleagues, Jamal Bowman and Mondaire Jones, have been critical of the president for taking a bit of a backseat when it comes to this legislation, not using his bully pulpit to push it through or at least get rid of the filibuster to push it through. Isn't it time for the president to take a bigger role on this and, in Congressman Bowman's words, lean on every single Democratic lawmaker, especially two senators who I'm sure you know who I'm referring to? Uh, I support getting rid of the filibuster. I absolutely think we should pass H.R. 1, the For the People Act, that's going to protect our freedom to vote. I also don't want people to be discouraged. People should understand that even though the laws that these Republican legislatures are passing are bad, they don't actually prevent you from voting in the same way that Jim Crow laws did, where, for example, if you couldn't count the number of jelly beans or jelly bean jar, you just couldn't vote. If you're registered to vote next year, you can vote. And I want people to be very angry I, I, that their votes are going to be suppressed. I want them to turn out massive numbers and vote. I, but, but Congressman, Congressman, I, I'm angry. I'm angry about what we're seeing across the state. And I'm also angry that the president of the United States hasn't come out and said, get rid of the filibuster, as Barack Obama has come out and basically suggested to be done, as Bill Clinton this week came out and said basically needs to be done. Why is the president not taking this seriously enough? I don't know their answer to that. Uh, now, my view of politics is also that Fair everything enough. seems impossible until it happens. So we just need to keep pushing. I think public sentiment is everything. Yes, as indeed. As Lincoln has said. Let me ask you one last question before I let you go. What do you make of this White House announcement of a deal on the infrastructure bill, scaled down to a trillion dollars over five years, and still with no guarantee of a reconciliation bill, too, with everything in that that's supposed to be in it? Manchin and Cinema are saying they're on board with some form of two-step process where you pass this bipartisan bill and then you do reconciliation, Democrats on their own. Republican Rob Portman said today, no, we're not on board with that. Where do you stand on this? I would not support a one-step process. If we're going to have a scaled-down, bipartisan version of infrastructure, then we absolutely have to have a reconciliation package that's going to have climate change and other significant provisions in it. I don't think the House would pass just a scaled-down, bipartisan infrastructure package. One last question. I'm going to throw one more in there. Bipartisanship. I find the whole obsession with bipartisanship by some members of your party, especially in a post-insurrection era, bizarre. Is it wrong of me to think it's bizarre? So, so I think it's fine to try to seek bipartisanship. And if you can get it, that's great. If you can't, you just have to move forward. And so I think it would be a mistake to not move forward if we don't get bipartisanship. I, I don't have any problems asking for it at the beginning, but then you just have to move forward if you can't get it. <laughs> yeah. Don't let it hold uh, good ideas hostage. Congressman Ted Liu, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.